Internet of Federated Things is our vision for the future of the Internet of Things. This work is a collaboration led by the University of Michigan across multiple universities and faculty with a wide variety of expertise. It is our vision for a new paradigm for IoT. We define this vision as the Internet of Federated Things. So for my talk, I will start by introducing the Internet of Things and our vision, the Internet of Federated Things. And finally, I will end with a very brief discussion on how will IOFT uh, change many of the current applications, be it in manufacturing, business, transportation, amongst many others. So what is IoT? IoT is basically defined by a smart and connected system. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, we had our physical system components. Then came the Industrial Revolution with, with this immense capability to collect data. Sensor prices dropped immensely. Nowadays, they're about $0.48 per sensor. We had this immense capability to collect data. Sensors were placed everywhere. We had wireless networks, data storage systems, clouds. And indeed, this transformed our traditional systems into connected systems. The hope of IoT was to move also from a merely connected system to a smart, connect, a smart and connected system through utilizing this immense data and doing some advanced analytics to make the system as smart as possible. So what is the basic feature of, of IoT? There is connectivity. We have data from multiple similar units that collect data in real time. Then we have the smartness. Since we have data from multiple similar units, we can compare that information, compare their operations, share some useful information, and extract common knowledge. And the hope is to provide better models to do prediction, control, and, and, and you name it. And indeed, this, this is an old notion. One can really argue that, that this idea of transferring knowledge dates back, dates back to, to a long time ago when artisans in similar geographic locations used to come together to perfect or standardize the quality of their crafts. So how does the current IoT system look like? I will give an example of uh, Ford Sync or GM's OnStar teleservice system, but this is the general setting of IoT nowadays. We have our edge devices or clients here, cars on the road. Then, then, then clients who register for a specific IoT service, they will have sensors installed on their vehicles, let's say their cars, and their data is continuously being uploaded to a cloud or a back office processing center. And the hope really is in the cloud, those big models are learned. And the hope is to keep the driver informed about the health of their vehicle. For example, one possible model that is learned is an anomaly detection model where they check if, if, this, if the health of the car is, is okay or there is some anomaly. And in case there is an anomaly, a service alert is directly sent to the driver. Okay, you need to do some maintenance. So what are the features? Gigantic amounts of data are uploaded and stored in the clouds. Then models like predictive maintenance are trained in these data centers. And then these models are deployed, sent back to the edge. So clearly there are some obvious drawbacks of such systems. The first one is the storage burden. Nowadays with, all, with, with the increase of the number of edge devices and, and the higher frequency of data collected, sometimes storage, the storage needs are beyond what any product data center can handle. Then there is the communication burden. Uploading this immense amount of data in high frequency is not hard, it's very costly. It needs a huge internet bandwidth, which is often not the case for edge devices. There is deployment latency. Sending a model back will, in, will, will cause some latency in deployment from the cloud to the edge. And definitely privacy is one big concern. You're sharing your raw data which is a huge infringement on privacy. And indeed this benefits large enterprises capable of building their own cloud structures at the expense of smaller entities. But here is the key, what is changing in IoT? What is changing is one thing, edge devices have more computational capabilities. They have more compute power. I like to define IoT as IoT in general is, is this revolution in communication and ability to collect data. But the next step, the new paradigm for IoT is one that exploits 
the computational resources at the edge. With the infiltration of AI chips right now, autonomous cars can really do huge computations. 3D printers right now have Raspberry Pis, they have controllers, they have computational power. Uh, mobile phones nowadays can do huge computations. They can even learn some small deep learning networks. So the fundamental question in IoT is how can we exploit the computational power at the edge? And this is where IOFT starts for the Internet of Federated Things. It's based on one simple idea. As soon as you have compute resources at the edge, you do not need anymore to share data. You can run small computations locally and only share whatever the cloud or the orchestrator or other devices need from you. And this new paradigm is a paradigm where IoT moves away from the cloud to the cloud. So here IOFT is, is, is the future IoT system. And the term federated refers to some level of autonomy because right now clients or edge devices are participating in the training. So they have some, and they have their local models on the edge. So they have some kind of autonomy. And there is, then there is federated learning. And this notion of federation is also inspired by federated learning, which, be, which is becoming an extremely popular approach right now for decentralized and privacy preserving model training. This is where this, this notion of the internet of federated things comes from. Let's take a very, very simple example. Let's assume you have a cloud, which is the central orchestrator, and you have clients, let's say mobile phones. And the cloud wants to learn a mean Y bar over a single feature Y. In this future, assume that the clients have some compute capabilities. If clients have some compute capabilities, then instead of uploading their entire data set or their entire vector Y, they can do a simple averaging calculation and calculate Y bar. Each client calculates Y bar, then they only send out a focused update, which is Y bar, which is their mean. And definitely the, the, the cloud can now calculate Y bar with the exact same accuracy as having the entire data set, because Y I bar is a sufficient statistic to learn Y bar. In reality, however, models that are being learned are much more complicated than just calculating a simple mean. So a system in IOFT or, a, or the IOFT procedure goes, goes as follows. First of all, the central orchestrator will broadcast some kind of a model, say a deep learning model. Then, then clients will do their local training, will train or update the model, and only send their, their focused updates back to the orchestrator. And this procedure is iterated multiple times until some criteria, some stopping criteria, such as validation accuracy is met. And after having a strong global model, the next step is to do some testing on held out devices. So this becomes an iterative procedure where the central orchestrator is communicating with the edge devices multiple times. So why is this simple idea revolutionary? The first thing is privacy. So by moving model training from the cloud to the crowd, we do not need any more users or edge devices do not need to share their valuable information. Said it's kept local. Autonomy. Right now, edge devices have models locally. They can be under independent control and they can actually opt out of this collaborative training process. Computation is very important. Right now, we do not need to fit those large models with immense amount of data on the cloud. Actually, the current practice most companies will use small subsets of the data because fitting those big models with all this data is often impractical, even with the immense utilization of distributed computing at the cloud, GPU, CPU, name, you name it. Instead, by exploiting compute resources and storage capacity at the edge, massive parallelization becomes a reality. Cost, cost is one of the key benefits. First of all, our storage needs at the cloud become much less. Companies right now really save a lot of money on storing data. And what's more is right now, less information is transmitted to the cloud. Each one is, each, each client is doing some computations and is only sending focused updates. This, this ent entitles this, this notion of data minimization. We're just sent, sent, sending whatever is needed. And this efficiently utilizes network bandwidth. Which, which definitely 
is uh, reduces cost immensely. Fast alerts and decisions, obviously, since we have our models at the edge, there is no latency in deployment. Fast encryption is key here. When, you, when you're sharing focused updates, it's much easier to encrypt focus updates than raw data or entire data sets. You can actually get much better guarantees. Resilience. Edge devices in this situation are now resilient. They're not dependent <clears throat> on a central point of failure, which is the orchestrator or the cloud, because they have their local models. Diversity and fairness is very important. Right now, companies that, that could not have collaborated before can do so now. Take, for example, medical institutes. Medical institutes could not share information due to the HIPAA Act, but right now they can collaborate to learn better models without the need to share data. Minimal infrastructure is also key. Right now, as AI chips are penetrating the market, as we have more and more compute power at the edge, really our computational needs are much less. Uh, and and our, our needs in, 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 in introducing new infrastructure are, are reduced. Okay, so here it's important to differentiate uh, IOFT from distributed systems. Distributed systems are centralized systems where, where all your data is located in one place. And what happens is that the clients or the edges in a distributed system are basically compute nodes. They can access any part of the data, they can shuffle, they can randomize the data. In IOFT, the data is located at the edge, resides at the edge, is, is not centrally stored. This is why data partitions are fixed. They cannot be shuffled, randomized. You cannot access a different part of the data. And another key differentiation is that in a centralized distributed system, those computational nodes are connected by large bandwidth. However, edge devices often have limited communication with unstable or, or slow connection. This is a key differentiation between IOFT and just distributed centralized systems. Indeed, IOFT recently has, has, has made a, a disruptive change to, to, to IoT. Many big IoT giants like Google, Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, and amongst others are trying to implement IOFT. Google, uh, Google was one of the pioneers of specifically federated learning, which is being sold right now as a service at Google. However, it's key to note that the entire system is still in its infancy phase. There are a lot of challenges to be addressed, and those challenges will be application specific. As IOFT infiltrates more applications, we will find many more interesting challenges. This is specified in the paper. So what are some of the challenges? This is by no means an exhaustive list, but just some of the challenges. The first one is statistical heterogeneity. And this is a price to pay for decentralization. Because data right now resides at the edge, data is of different size, different distribution, different clients will behave under different geographic, culture, socioeconomic difference or external factors. Take cars, some behave under different, different weather conditions, different driving conditions. So having just learning a model across these heterogeneous systems or a global model can be dangerous. This model can perform well on some clients and, and bad on others because there is a lot of heterogeneity. The second one is negative transfer. So in the, in the, in, 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 when there is not a lot of heterogeneity, the situation might happen where this collaboration in training or collaboration in learning models might not help. Actually, it will lead to worse performance relative to each client using their own data to learn a task. And this is what we call negative transfer. And one possible solution is personalization. Personalization is the notion that each client will eventually retain their own model while at the same time borrowing strength from each other. Communication efficiency and resource management, needless to say that devices not, all are, not only are heterogeneous in their data, but also in their capabilities in connectivity, in processing power, in, in ability to upload data, in, in energy consumption. So models need to account for such heterogeneity in the capabilities, while at the same time ensuring a fair performance across all clients. All clients should have comparable performance. Privacy, needless to say, is also a, a, one of the key motivators behind IOFT, but still one of the key challenges. Malicious clients can perhaps really affect this system or the training process 
like even a malicious central server can be a situation where the entire system is, 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 is broken. And finally, bias and fairness to go back to this idea of research resources. Clients with different resources, let's say some clients have new phones, some clients have old phones, and those have different amounts of data and different bandwidth. So clients with new phones will participate more in the training process, they have more data. And what happens is your end models will be more biased towards clients with more data and with better bandwidth and memory. And this is this causes fairness issues because our model is biased to some set of clients with a specific socioeconomic status. So this is a key challenge of bias and fairness in IOFT. Here I should note that what we have been discussing is a situation where we have a central orchestrator and we have different clients as the edge. However, IOT, IOFT structures will will be dictated by the applications. So one application is a situation where we have several clients, say patients, but the data from patients is partitioned over different hospitals. We have a hospital that collects data from one specific body part, a hospital that collects data from another specific body part. So the data set is part partitioned, but we have the similar sample space or the similar, the same clients. So how can IOFT be done in such situations? Perhaps one can have an orchestrator to aggregate the data, like a trusted orchestrator to join the data to have joint model training. And one can go a step forward. What if we completely remove the central orchestrator? Really, this is what blockchain nowadays is doing by peer-to-peer -peer networks. How viable is this option? How secure? How... There are a lot of questions that can be asked in such systems. So here I want to move a little bit to talk about model training in IOFT. And specifically, model training in IOFT is referred to as federated learning. So federated learning is the data analytics approach behind this decentralized IO, IoT system, which we call the Internet of Federated Things. And there are three approaches. We categorize model training into three approaches. A global model, where we're trying to learn one model that fits all. A personalized model where each client retains their own model. So instead of learning one model, we're learning a model on each individual client. And finally, meta learning, which I will discuss shortly in detail, is about learning a good starting point so that if I have a new client entering my system, they can personalize right away. So one model that fits all is global modeling. Our goal, for example, let's assume we're trying to learn a model f of w, and w is the parameters of, of f. Our goal is basically to minimize the average risk over all clients. So we're trying to find one set of weights that perform well on all clients. This is global modeling. We're trying to find one model that, that performs well in expectation across all clients. A personalized model is a model where our end goal is to learn different models at each client. We want to borrow strength from each other, but our end goal is to have some kind of local parameters or local models here, I define them as beta i. So each client retains their own model. And here heterogeneity can be explained in different ways. You can have heterogeneity in the conditional distribution of y given x. So given the same data, different clients will behave differently due to external factors. This is the conditional distribution of y given x. You can also have heterogeneity in the marginal distribution of x, as in the data that you have, the input data at different clients is different. For example, different clients experience different anomalies. So how to handle challenges in such a situation? And this is where the paper is concentrated on data analytics challenging for global modeling, personalized modeling, and meta-learning. Meta-learning is the notion of learning to learn fast. <clears throat> Meta-learning, our goal is not to find a set of parameters W that perform well in expectation. Rather, we want to find parameters or an initial model that, that, that acts as a prior or a good initialization, such that for any new task I give this W, they can do good personalization using their data in a very fast manner. So this is, in this graph, I call it a, a, a parameter with high activation energy. As soon as you hit it with some data for some new data, it can, you, can give you fast personalization. This is the notion of meta-learning. So the paper, the last section of this paper ends by discussing 
how IOFT will revolutionize different applications. How, how will it enable massively distributed manufacturing? How will it rethink the current energy systems to become fully decentralized? How we can have different, better control of autonomous vehicles using IOFT? So I strongly encourage you to read the application section to see how different industries will be affected by IOFT. I finally would like to note that that during by writing this throughout writing this paper, we found out that real life data sets for IOFT are still urgently needed. This is a new topic. It's it's it has seen explosive interest, but still most of the applications are within mobile applications. However, as IOFT is starting to infiltrate different industries. Only with deep, under, uh, deep engineering knowledge of the underlying system, we can formulate the right analytics. For this reason, we created this directory uh, for people to upload their data sets uh, that, that are, are IUFT based or based on real life data. Our goal is really, we will not have the data on the website. We will just have a link to the repository where, where the researchers have their data, we will explain their data. Our goal is really to have a centralized location to guide people to data sets, to real, real data sets for IFT, to benchmark their models and test them. Thank you.